So when I was in high school, I competed in what were called speech tournaments. I really actually wanted to be a star baseball player, but I only could see out of one eye, and so that didn't take me very far. I also tried track and field, but I was just a hair too slow to make those final heats. But in speech, speech tournaments, I couldn't win. Actually, I acquired several trophies and came in fourth in the state of Colorado my junior year. So I was really pretty good at that. But do you know when I was really the most fulfilled by those speech competitions? When I became a teacher and a coach and was able to help others learn and feel comfortable speaking in front of others. I was most rewarded when I helped others to succeed. Now, our Western American culture is all about being the winner. But it seems like we haven't been doing a lot of winning lately. You know, the U.S. usually wins the most medals at the, at the Summer Olympics, as we just recently saw, but we usually only finish like third or fourth in the Winter Olympics. We still have the biggest military budget on the face of the globe. But our perception is, is that we're weak because of these recent military problems. Our economy is second to none, yet many question our leadership in the world. And then there's this political stalemate in Washington, political polarization throughout the country. It seems that lately we've had a not a whole lot amount of glory that comes from our winning. And we've had this battle with COVID. And it seems like we're often on the losing end of that competition as well. But things are slowly, I really hope, I pray to God that slowly that we are beginning to reach the end and move ahead. But there have been consequences of our war with COVID and its Delta variant. Too many sick. Too many have died. Too much anger. And churches. Churches have been struggling as well. The statistics that I read that we are all too unfortunately familiar with is, is that we've had declined attendance over these last 18 months. And this church has suffered just as much as any other. Not as many people coming to church, programs halt, which begs the question, who, what is our response going to be? What do we do next? Now, being from our highly competitive American culture, our natural inclination is to fight back, to do what we've always done, to compete. Now, many are still going to church, but yet so many of us believe that we just need to hurry up and get people back into our church, recruit new members, start new programs. I hear, I hear how we need to get back to the way things used to be, how we want to just return to what we know as normal. Maybe. What we need to think about as Christians is not so much to be called the winners, to have this glory, to win the race. As James and John in our gospel reading this morning so much desire, but to be the servants, to be the slaves that Jesus calls us to be, to trust that God will provide, that God will protect that all we are, our job is to do is to be patient, to pray, listen to Scripture and the Holy Spirit. Maybe we're called to resist our tendency towards glory and instead look to the cross. Trust God will provide in God's timing, not ours. You see, when we become the winners, when we are the ones who are serving, a little context to today's gospel lesson. Just prior to our reading, the disciples have just heard Jesus proclaim for the third time that he's going to Jerusalem, not in triumph, not in victory, but to be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes and condemned to death. In graphic detail, Jesus tells his disciples that he will then be handed over to the Romans who will mock him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. And after three days, rise from the grave. 
And it is right after Jesus says these gut-wrenching words that the disciples James and John ask what is really a pretty vain and not stupid question. They ask Jesus, hey, can we sit with you? Like right on the right, the middle left. Can we sit with you in his glory? Now, we can't really fault James and John because, you know, as Americans, we would probably respond the same. See, our culture's instinct is to conquer, to win, to be the best. It is what our culture, our values, our parents have trained us to be. We celebrate the winners. Those with power and status, not those who submit to be the servants. We need to listen to those words of Jesus, who patiently reminds the disciples and all of us that his mission is not to seek glory, but to serve. Not to be the best, the winner, the one who leaves all the others in the dust. Jesus, the Son of God's mission on earth, is to humbly welcome all into the kingdom of God. Jesus calls us to be the servant. Jesus calls us to be servant, and Jesus modeled this call by his own suffering death on the cross. Jesus gave his life for us. Our scripture readings this morning say that Jesus gave his life as ransom. For many. Now, the Greek for ransom is lytron. And lytron is referred to whenever a slave's freedom is purchased. You see, God's gift to us is that Jesus died on the cross to free us, not for glory, but to be servants. And our good news is, is that we are saved. And yet we do not owe God anything in return. Our salvation is the gift from God. Through the power of the cross, we are free to choose to go against our human need for glory. We are free to choose not to be the winner, but instead choose to be the humble servant who freely submits we become the winners when we serve others. I'm reminded of a story of a journalist who many years ago traveled to India to do a story about Mother Teresa and her work amongst the desperately poor leprosy-infected people of Calcutta, India. So this journalist is looking all over for the hospital trying to find Mother Teresa and finds her the leprosy ward. And he, she's sitting at the bedside of this young man. Now, the smell in that ward was just awful. But yet, here's Mother Teresa, bent over this young man, patiently cleansing the festering sores on the man's arms. The journalist just looks on in amazement and says, Mother Teresa, I would not do what you're doing for a million bucks. And Mother Teresa looks up at the man and says, Neither would I, sir. Neither would I. We come to the foot of the cross not for payment or to sit in glory or to be the winners, but because at the foot of the cross is where we are closest to our humble Savior. Jesus Christ. I know. Lord knows, I know how hard it is for just to sit in this church and, and to see the empty spaces around us. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you that are here today, for our guests that are among us. But I wonder, I wonder if there's a different way to return to Perhaps God is calling us to a new kind of normal, one where we're not the winners, we're just the humble servants. Trusting, trusting that God is the one who will show us the way. It's important that we share our concerns with one another. 
It's important that we reach out to our members who are not, have not yet returned. And welcome anyone new into our congregation, into our community. And we can also reach out to the greater community, like we, we do with our Fresh Start program. Let us ask ourselves, how else, besides this Fresh Start program, which is so wonderful, how else can we humbly submit ourselves to be the servants of Christ? Maybe that's the new normal God has called.